job. Vote on ambassadors. Do your job. Vote on agency leaders and counterterrorism officials. If you want to stop extremism in your party, you can start by showing the American people that you respect the President of the United States and the Constitution enough to do your job right here in the United States Senate. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren doing her job, uh, picking a fight in Washington that connects the Republican Party's freak out over extremism in its own presidential race with the need to say no to extremism in governance, like, for example, refusing to even consider a nominee for a Supreme Court vacancy for a solid year. Senator Warren joins us now for the interview. Senator, uh, I really appreciate you being here. It's really nice to have you here. Good to be here. Uh, you are known for big, impassioned speeches, but um, even for you, that, that was a barn burner. And I, I just have to ask you to, to spell it out for us here. What's the connection? What's the relationship you see between the Supreme Court seat being held vacant and the Republican Party basically cracking up over who's winning their primary? Okay, so look, what's the problem with the two guys they've got at the top right now, with Donald Trump and with Ted Cruz? These are both people who basically deny the legitimacy of their opponents. Uh, they go on the attack. They demean millions of Americans. And that's what identifies them as extremists and why Republicans, man, Republicans in the Senate are breaking apart over this. And yet, what have Republicans in the Senate been doing since the very day that Barack Obama was sworn in. They have given in to their extremists. In fact, they have nursed their extremists along so that there have been fights and delays over what? Over the basic things that happen in government. So the president tries to get his team out, you know, starting in after he had been reelected by five million votes. We all come back, and the first thing that happens is the Republicans in the Senate want to shut it down. They don't want anybody to go forward to be the head of the NLRB. Why? Because they're trying to shut down the NLRB. They don't want anybody to be appointed to the head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Why? Because they don't want the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to be able to function. They don't want a secretary of labor. They don't want anybody confirmed over the Environmental Protection Agency. They don't want the President of the United States to be able to fill any any of the three vacancies then on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, the second most important court in the United States. They want to leave dozens of ambassadors stranded. And what's this all about? It's not about a problem with a particular nominee to do was effectively deny the legitimacy of this president, try to shut down the government, try to keep it from functioning. So they did that. Seven years they did it. They fought and they fought and they fought. And now they got the biggest one of all. And that is a vacancy in the United States Supreme Court. And notwithstanding what it says in the Constitution, Article 2, Section 2, the president shall nominate with the advice and consent of the Senate. Notwithstanding that, notwithstanding the oath they took, they want to say, I don't care who you bring us. We are not going to hold hearings and we are not going to hold a vote on anyone. In other words, no legitimacy for you, the President of the United States, no buying into the basic functioning of government. Well, all I can say is that's what constitutes extremism in the United States Senate. That's what has nursed what's going on now in the presidential primaries. Is that crisis that they've tried to create, as you argue, around the legitimacy of President Obama, is it, is it specific to him? Or if if one of the Democratic candidates ends up winning the presidential election this year, are you concerned that Republican senators would keep that blockade, even of the Supreme Court vacancy, in place even after President Obama if there's a new Democrat elect elected? We know, we've been talking about this over and over. This is the party of no. This is the party of blockade. This is the party that says shut down the legal functioning of, of government. I mean, Really, I think about what that means. When they say with this president, they don't want him to put anybody in at the NLRB. 
because if the NLRB doesn't have a quorum, they can't function. And what does that mean? We, we lose our government agency that's supposed to decide disputes between employers and employees. You just, you just effectively shut that down. They didn't want anybody at the CFPB because then they couldn't issue rules, issue rules against payday lenders or against mortgage servicers who were breaking the law. It's a shut down approach. Now, they've gone after President Obama for this from the beginning. Whether they would continue that or not, obviously, I don't have any way of knowing. But I do know this. They are paying the price for their own extremism. It has now taken them by the throat. And so when they stand up in the Senate and say, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen to us? We now may have a presidential nominee who is so extreme that he will pull us over the edge electorally and, and cause us a disaster in November. The answer is, guys, this is what you did to yourselves. And if you really want to stop it, stop it right now. Stand up and do your job. When you, when you see that, those two things happening at once, and we're in this very unusual mm -hmm. moment right now, it's mesmerizing to see the Republican Party, as you say, you know, freaking out about the prospect of who they're about to nominate yep. as their presidential candidate. And, and frankly, I, I'd be freaking out too if I were a Republican. <laughs> Given that they are, and they're freaking out publicly, and it's now a very, it's, it's, yep. a, it's, a, it's an easy to see thing. Is that leading to any Republicans in the Senate, any Republicans in Congress, starting to get a little shaky on some of this other stuff that you're talking about, starting to change their minds maybe about the court or some of these other approaches that they've had to governance? Well, you know, that's the question. I mean, what's it going to take for these guys? Ron Johnson today said, well... If it were a Republican president, yeah, we'd feel differently about doing that vote. I mean, can you be any more naked about what's going on? That there is no point of principle here for those guys. This is naked politics. And they're saying, hey, if our team's in, we want to grab everything and make it work for our side. We want to stand in there and fight for the people we represent. We want to make government work for the rich and powerful even better. That's, that's what Ron Johnson is saying. He is in a hotly contested election. He's got somebody after him who's going to say to the people of Wisconsin, hey, bud, you are going to be held accountable here. And I think that's, frankly, what we've got to hear everywhere. When those Republicans in the Senate are thinking about November and they're thinking about their own hides, this is really about the American people coming up on this one, really saying there has to be some accountability. There has to be some accountability in the United States Senate for people who say, I put politics ahead of the Constitution. I put politics ahead of respect for the duly elected president of the United States. I put politics ahead of everything except my own job. You have not made an endorsement in the Democratic presidential race. I know you're not going to do that tonight. I will not pressure you to do so. Um, but I have been Good. watching the pressure on you to do it. Uh, a lot of people obviously feel like your endorsement, because of your leadership in the party, because of the way you connect with people, people feel like your endorsement could have a, a determinative effect on the election. You ought to use that power. I just have to ask if that pressure is uncomfortable. I feel like I've, some of what I've seen directed toward you on this issue and the fact that you haven't endorsed, I feel like some of that pressure has been sort of ugly toward you. And I want to know how, how you have felt about it. You know, we're Democrats. We're passionate. We believe. Um, and I get that. But look, I care about what's going to happen in this race. God, I care about it. And it is important that we have Democrats and a conversation going on about what we think are the principal issues in this debate. And that's what we're doing. We're out there talking about, both our candidates are talking about the importance of holding Wall Street accountable. We're having a debate back and forth about the best way to make sure that our kids can make it through college without getting crushed by student loan debt. We're out there having a 
big conversation about trade and what kind of trade policies we should follow. We're doing what Democrats should be doing. We're talking about the issues, and more than anything else, we're talking about who it is that we want government to work for. And boy, does that make a contrast with what's going on on the other side, where those guys are just trying to out ugly each other and making the difference as clear as is possible for the American people. I think, I think this is what democracy should be about. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Democrat of Massachusetts. It's been too long uh, since we've spoken, Senator. Thank you for coming back tonight. I hope we'll have you back again soon. You bet. I appreciate it. All right, more to come tonight. Stay with us. Life as a spokesbox is great.